As a kid, he was very nice to his cousin and especially to his sister. Me and Ali are only 18 months apart, so we're very close. He always just felt like the middle child. Maybe he thought that he didn't get as much attention as everybody else. Me and Trisha's birthdays were very large. All of our cousins would come, you know, because we, we could have joint birthdays. And Ollie got? I don't, I don't even remember any. He's very practical. So oftentimes people think he's the oldest. He's very kind, very funny, and always thinking of his parents first. <laughs> <laughs> He's a family man. He takes care of his parents and he loves them. Ollie's a, a great, energetic uncle. He is a playground for our children. He just lets them climb all over him. He throws them in the air. They all just jump on him. I mean, they have so much fun with him. Oh, Robin is a child. She was the most even-tempered child. She was very giving, very sharing with her best friends, Erica and Deanna. Just a very caring, very thoughtful child. And I think she's carried that through her adulthood. I see it in the way she cares about her fellow human being. She's really committed not just to uh, arts and culture work, not just to highlighting issues in the Asian Pacific Islander community and the Latino community and just highlighting voices that are not heard otherwise. She's also really committed as a friend and also to her family and to her colleagues and her coworkers. She is inquisitive, aka nosy. <laughs> She's a planner. She's <laughs> very meticulous about each step. When she's at work, she's constantly multitasking. I stayed with her in her dad's house in Wailuku. I learned that Robin can be mellow, <laughs> like real chill. I got up, and I don't know if I expected that she'd be like at the table with an agenda or something, but she was just like, in her bikini top, sunning, reading a magazine on the porch, chilling. And I got to see that in Hawaii. Like, Mellow Robin, it's a trip. Trish went to UC Santa Cruz while I was still in high school and then also junior college. So, Whenever she needed a ride home, which was quite often, <laughs> I was basically uh, her, her Ollie Uber. We kicked it in Santa Cruz as much as we could, me and my brother, um, and we got to know her roommates and, you know, people that she was friends with in college and especially her future husband, Ron Ramos. Remember hanging out with Ron a lot. Ron snuck us into the dining halls. I think I met Robin on one of those events where you get to meet a bunch of different people from your college. Went to a few of PISA meetings, FSA. Our circles were kind of touching. In the teenage years, uh, my daughters shaved their heads, left patches of hair, of course, which turned every color of the rainbow. They were into the ripped hose, those big army boots. Then, of course, Robin did go on to Santa Cruz, and then Robin had kind of different color hair. So while I was at Santa Cruz, that's like when I started to go to shows, seeing punk bands, all ages shows, and seeing bands became something that wasn't so distant, but I actually had friends who were in these bands. They have a band, Skyflakes. Ollie bought the drum set with the tax return that he got. 
We're just a family band. It's like the Partridge family. And then uh, the first Pinoy's Pop happened and Ollie told us about it and it kind of gave us a, a goal towards playing the show. I knew Robin from the scene. Robin was always at shows, like Aperture and Pinoy's Pop. Robin and I were both punk rock brown girls, and I think that that is the thing that made us closer faster. I saw Robin as very punk and energetic. Like if you could throw it out in a mosh pit, that's unique. I knew Oliver played drums. Next thing I know, he's acting and he's good at it. Next thing I know, he's doing stand-up and he's good at it. He wrote all kinds of sketches and screenplays. I remember finding out that he was Filipino and he worked for Bindle Stiff. So then we had Brown and Down and like in the arts. Bindle Stiff Studio is the Filipino-run performing arts space in the South of Market area of San Francisco. And I'm the managing director. I heard Robin on KPFA. She works as part of the uh, Apex Express Collective, and I also really appreciated her radio work. I was on Apex once. Yeah, I'm kind of trying to get into radio and podcasting, and uh, she's been a tremendous resource for me. Having a Peabody Award-winning sister-in-law is <laughs> pretty cool. I'm your host, George Takei, and this is Crossing East. Our stories, our history, our America. Crossing East presents Raising Cain by Robin Takayama and Dime Roberts. So we both tried a lot of different things with dating. Um, Robin definitely put herself out there, which I really respected. Robin is someone who has done a lot of self-work to make herself the best she could be. Which surprised me when I found out that she was single and so uh, Joyce and I, we came up with this thing called Project Frad. Find Robin a date. So I won four tickets to the Giants game um, through a raffle at Alan's work, Hospitality House. And of course I was going to take Alan and Joyce. And then I was like, well, who should I have as my date? And at that time, Oliver became managing director, and there was a bindle hall where he reached out to me afterwards and said, hey, we're all going for drinks. And it was at that bar that I felt like he was hollering at me. So I asked Alan, like, what about Oliver? And boom, it hit me like, why didn't I think of that? You know, it was obvious because, you know, after a while, you got to know what Robin was looking for. She wanted someone who was conscious about the community, loved her community, loved art. But I think she, what was really important for her is that this guy had a social consciousness and was intelligent. I think it was a plus that Oliver had looks. <laughs> as far as I could tell, I, I didn't think the Giants game was a date. I mean, in my mind, it wasn't a date. When I met her, at her apartment, and we rode our bicycles to the ballpark. We shared caramel corn and kind of walked along the concourse. And I don't know, it was just nice. The whole evening, we just seemed to kind of hit it off. And since, since then, I just couldn't get enough of her. told me he's like I'm moving back to help with my family so he moves back and then he's telling me he's like fixing this he's fixing that and I'm like okay I didn't even know you could fix things then you know he starts dating Robin so then he's telling me okay I'm going back and forth like you know sometimes I'm uh, in San Francisco and then sometimes I'm in Stockton and then next minute he just never went back <laughs> it's about six months into our relationship I was scheduled to have pretty major surgery. I was gonna get part of my colon removed. And two weeks before that surgery was scheduled to take place, I got laid off from my job and I lost my health care. Of 
course, I told this to Robin, and she offered to add me onto her healthcare plan by becoming domestic partners. At first, I was thinking, oh, oh, was she just using Robin? I thought, well, this seems like jumping the gun a little because at the time, there was no real true commitment yet. But by this point, I knew Robin enough to rely on her good judgment. I thought Robin was amazing. I could tell that Robin really loves Oliver to do that for him. I mean, now I want to get hurt and see if my man will do the same thing for me. <laughs> I was relieved that Ollie had something to cover that stuff. And he was able to be taken care of at that time when he needed it. In terms of the domestic partnership, I, th I think it really confused basically everybody. I mean, people weren't sure if we were married. I think most people assumed that we had eloped. I thought, why don't you just get married? <laughs> it caused a lot of confusion for me. And a lot of, I don't know what to call Robin. <laughs> you know, I would tell people, like, I'd, she's like kind of like my sister-in-law, I guess. I remember being like, girl, what's going on at work? And she was like, oh, it, girl, it's bad. It's like, this is going on, that's going on. And I'm like, how are you feeling? And she was like, I'm good. And I was like, what? She's like, I'm going to see Oliver tonight. Like, like, just like able to just let it roll off the shoulders. looking forward to having Robin be officially part of the family. I love seeing Robin supported because being an independent woman is really a pain in the ass. Robin, I'm so happy that you were able to find such a good man. Oliver, you treat her right. I see Robin really loves Oliver. I can feel it. That's why my prayers had been answered. There is no doubt in my mind that Robin's mom would absolutely love Oliver. Just by how Oliver treats her daughter, how much respect he has for her and for women in general. But she is here in spirit. And Oliver, I want you to know that Sandy has her arms around you and she's thanking you for taking care of her little girl. But I don't know if they will ever gonna have children. Maybe a dog. <laughs> Maybe a dog. I'm gonna be a grandma to a dog. <laughs> it has to be a toy poodle, okay? <laughs> Ollie gives so much to others. He puts everything into making sure our parents are okay, we're okay, the theater is okay, that the people in the theater are okay. And now he gets to have a partner that makes sure that he's cared and loved for. How could you ask for anything else? My name is Laquita Marshall, and I know Oliver through work. My name is Beatrice L. Thomas, and I know Robin through the Arts Commission. My name is Auntie Carmen, and Robin's mom and I have been best friends for many, many, many years. My name is Jericho Saria, and I am Ali's brother. My name is Julieta Kusnid, and I am a good friend of Robin's and now a good friend of Oliver's. Hi, my name is Alan Manalo, and I love me some Robin Takayama and Oliver Saria. My name is Trisha, and I'm Ollie's older sister. Hi, I'm Aurora Navarro Santos Saria, and I'm Oliver's mother. Mm -hmm.